What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Hi-Fi Hour on Audio Architects. I am here today with James from Heart Audio Cables. What's going on, James? Hey, man. How you doing? Don't be nervous, James. Oh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> yeah. Time to clam up right now. Oh, dude. We're, we're fine. Um, so, James, uh, tell me a bit, tell my audience a bit about your company, how it got started, and what you guys do. Uh, should I get started with messing you right away? Like, no, I you checked can't. out your YouTube channel. Uh oh. Oh god. And I like how it's presented, man. You're, you're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> it looks yeah, good. I thought you were gonna throw me a curveball. <laughs> I was like, why doesn't he have very many views yet? And then I realized, yeah, you hadn't started it that long ago. Mm -hmm. But it, it looks like you're on the right track, man. I appreciate it, bro. We are about to try to dip our toes in this YouTube realm. And you should. Um, you should. Yeah. And I and I think uh guys like you make it intimidating, you know? It's like Oh, well, come you, on, dude. You look up the Josh Valor videos and I'm like, man, I need to buy a more expensive camera or something. You know. Uh, honestly, if if I and I and I'll tell you this after after we're not we're not recording anymore, but I'll I'll give you the breakdown of what I use and you'll be like, No way. All right. Like I'll you can you it. can literally get everything, the whole setup for under a grand. That's what I like to hear right there. So so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give you the lowdown on on what I'm using and everything. But um, but yeah, tell me about you. Tell me about your company. What what made you start? What made you get into cables? And what made you start Heart Audio? Because you you look like a young guy. So <laughs> I and, and I know that. and I know you're probably gonna get a lot of you probably do get a lot of a lot of crap for that because this you're in an industry that is is primarily. I mean, if I look at the demographics, even from my my channels and my platforms. The demographics are, I'd say, th between thirty to forty years old. That's that's the big chunk of it, and it kind of more leans towards the older age. So uh, old white guys, right? I, I always feel like, yeah, man, everyone's spending so much money on this. Young on Hispanic, this. you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these systems just to listen to Dark Side of the Moon again. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I. I guess about me, I appreciate that, that you think I look young. Uh, I put my makeup on for this. That's probably why. You know? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> um, I, my background, I guess, is I was a product development engineer for like uh, a large company that most people have probably heard of. And I don't know if I should name them or whatever, but um, I worked on new product development mm -hmm. for like, you know, I would be like, a, I, I mean, I was in, in the engineering department, but you would also, I would also like run programs and stuff. So you're have cross-functional teams that, you know, you start from idea to piloting a, a product in a factory somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. and watching it go out the door. So, uh, I don't, I don't know. I guess that was my job before hard audio cables and, um, I being in a cubicle, that was like a cubicle type job. I listened to a lot of music. It's mm -hmm. like my number one thing. Uh, I listened to a ton of music and I used to just think I listened to so much of it and I, I spent so much time with this. I'd like to enjoy it more. So I've just got into audiophile gear naturally and just trying to, you know, at, at first you, you try to justify it as like, oh, I need some better performing headphones, but then eventually I just like let go of that. I'm like, I just want to get some cool toys and play with them and enjoy mm -hmm. the hobby, you know? So I was just into it. And then I was like trying to plan my next little setup at the house. And I realized I needed some custom cables to, to do what I wanted to do. And so I went to start shopping for them. And, uh, I was like, one, the lead times were really long. It's like three months. Mm -hmm. and the prices were for some places were three months right other places like three weeks but in the age of amazon it's like i i would like to to get it in two days if possible you know that'd be nice you, you want it now you want it like <laughs> you wanted it yesterday you know like right right and then the prices were just um in my opinion you know they just seemed really high for what goes into it i guess i i, I don't know um i'm not saying the prices aren't justified for some places but in my opinion, it was just like, I can't justify spending that much on a cable. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'll just make it myself. I'll figure it out. So I started down that path. A few years prior to that, I had screwed around with uh, re-terminating like my Grado headphones. Mm -hmm. Grado guy, I guess. And uh, I, I had gotten this cool DAP 
player. It was an Onkyo DPX1, and it had a two and a half millimeter balanced output on it. And those Grado mm-hmm. headphones only come with that. They have the, the built-in cable, and they only come with that quarter-inch connector. So I was like, I really want to use this DAP with these headphones balanced. So I, you know, chopped them up and and did this like modular thing where I was like, okay, I want to still be able to use the quarter inch, but also use the two and a half millimeter. And that was kind of the start of this modular thing we do, mm-hmm. which I mean, if those of you are not familiar with us, or if, if you, if you haven't come to our site yet, like we focus on selling a modular system of, of cables. So you go and you pick the headphone cable that's appropriate to what your headphones are. And then you pick an interconnect appropriate to what your source is. So, the idea there is you buy one headphone cable and then you can kind of like, instead of having to buy a whole new expensive headphone cable, whenever you upgrade gear or something, you you end up buying a, a less expensive interconnect, which is like 15 bucks instead of 80 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it, your headphone cable can sort of grow with you or whatever, and just has more utility. And so I always liked that personally. And then, so it's like a couple of years later, I needed to, I decided I was just going to make these cables myself. I wasn't going to spend all that money and, um, I am friends with the one of my friends uh, runs the show at a, a synthesizers business, and um, they're here in town. And we just go to lunch frequently. And I would like <laughs> ask him if I could borrow some tools, you know, because they have all the soldering equipment you could ask for. And, right and we here, and then you know we're just talking shop about stuff. And he was like, "Well, have you ever have you thought about selling this stuff?" You know, mm-hmm. and I started thinking about it and looking at how much it was costing me to make the stuff I was doing and um, ways I could differentiate it and what would be the, uh, well, like I, the business case or like the, what's the proposition I'm, I'm giving our customers. And I, I couldn't mm-hmm. find a reason not to do it. And sort right. of like those things, you come up with these ideas and like five minutes later, you realize how stupid of an idea was. And I could never, I never got to that point where it's like realized, Oh, well, here's why that idea is stupid. So it just kind of like one thing led to another eight months later, I guess I launched it. And then, um, I launched it in September of 2019. And you are brand new. You're really yeah, we are. Yeah. I mean, this is the face of no sleep right here. Um, oh, dude, tr- trust me. The, the hustle will not let you sleep for, for a very long time until, yeah. <laughs> until you're, until you're about 10, 20 years in and you're just sitting there collecting money then. <laughs> but then <laughs> you don't seem like the kind of person that you seem like you, you like to be involved and pretty hands on and, um, have, have you built a team or is it just you doing the whole thing? Yeah. So it started out, um, I, you know, I had an eight to five, you know, full-time job, wife, two kids. I would just, after the kids went to sleep, I'd go build cables in mm-hmm. my office at the house. So I, I, you know, I had this idea that I need to have this certain amount of stock built up when I launch it so I can like stay on top of orders and stuff. So I, I got that amount and launched it and I was out of that I was out of that stock in like a couple of weeks or something and it was like immediately like oh I'm behind the eight ball and so ever since then it's been a, a life of trying to play catch up with orders coming in mm-hmm. and um it, it grew faster than I expected it to my thought was maybe I do 20 orders a month and it's just some extra income for my family and then maybe in a couple of years it'll grow and I can couple it with something else and I could quit my job and and do this full time but mm-hmm. it moved a lot faster than I expected it to. And so as of May in 2020, this is my full-time job now. This is what I do. Oh, congratulations, man. And so we have a team of about, I think it's like nine people total. We have someone working remote, uh, Hannah, who is on the podcast and most of our customers interact with if they email us and things like that. Um, And then I have a production manager here and uh, uh, maybe five or six workers who come in and help get the job done but it's have you thought about that like a year (laughs) well almost a year and a half now yeah it was just you starting out building cables in your office at night after your job tired tired is all holy hell and now you got a team of people (laughs) you got employees you know and you work with people and, and you're putting out crazy stuff now we talked about this before we uh we actually started hit the record button but um, I first saw your uh, your products on Zeos's channel, Z Reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, 
<laughs> the guy is absolutely hilarious. I'll tell you what. <laughs> like sometimes I'll, I'll have it because, like I said, I I originally started watching his stuff because I, I bought the Ship ninety five hundreds from uh, Phillips, and I was I actually just uh, the the review is actually in in um, it's being edited right now. However, camera. it should come out soon. But uh, I, I wanted to know, like I wanted the lowdown on it on a on. on those headphones and he was the first one that popped up yep. and I'm like, dude, I'm going to watch this. And then his, his content is kind of addicting. Cause it's just, I, I almost kind of want to see what he'll say next. Right. You know, it's, one, it's one of those things. So then I stumbled upon your, um, cause I meant, I saw him mention that the cord or the cable that the ship comes with is ridiculously long. And he was not wrong. The things like yeah. nine and a half feet long. So, but I'm, like, okay, really great headphones. I'm glad you bought those. I, I like them a lot. Oh, dude, they sound so good. So yeah. I was like, no, now I need now I need cables. So I, I, I stumbled upon his review of your cables where he unboxed everything. And and, um, you know, I guess this is a good a good segue to, to get into product mix. But um, you, the way he, like you presented him with, you know, all these options and, and the the adapters. Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about how, like the the package you sent him. And, and if that's a good entry point for someone starting out like me, because I'm barely starting out in the head right. fight game now because mm-hmm. now I'm hooked. So now I got to get all the all the parts together. So <laughs> um, so tell yeah, tell me a little bit about the product mix and what would be a good like setup for someone's starting out Mm -hmm. well first i want to say like when i look back at that unboxing video that first group of product i sent them or whatever Mm -hmm. i'm like man i wish i could send them what we make now you know (laughs) like i i uh are we've we've revved the design and like every rev i'm like man i wish we were doing this from day one but that's how it goes you know you just improve as you get feedback and Mm -hmm. you, you know ideas come to you and stuff like that but uh in terms of starting out, like if you want to get into this ecosystem or stuff, I, it starts with what your equipment is, I'd say, and, and what you want. Like for me, I don't really um, get into a lot of like the snake oil and stuff of uh, the audiophile world. Uh, so um, I'm, I, I'm budget conscious personally. So, but, but like one of the few things I do like, value or think for me improves my listening experience is a, a balanced uh, output. So mm-hmm. I like to listen to balanced headphones when I can. If, if a headphone can be ran balanced, I want it to run at balance where possible. Okay. So that immediately opens the door to like all these other connections you got to worry about and figure out. And so if you have a p- pair of balanced headphones and, and you want to r- listen to it on your like two and a half millimeter DAP or <laughs> also listen to it on your stereo, your turntable at home or something, you know, that's kind of where this kit comes in. You know, you get our kit. It's got that quarter inch connector. You can unplug it out of the stereo at the house and then plug it into your DAP and head out the door. You know, it's just an, an instead of swap. instead of purchasing for three or four different cables, yeah. which I have done in the past to, to solve problems. Um, you include uh, you or you have the option to purchase the the kit where it includes different adapters for different scenarios that just right, click yeah. to the to that one. So as long as you like the color of the of the cable, you can <laughs> the cable essentially for a long period of time. Right. Until so that, that's the thing, right? So if we win a customer and they decide to come back and buy more from us, mm-hmm. you know they'll spend fifteen bucks instead of eighty. It's a really terrible business plan, but. <laughs> it is useful. <laughs> well, dude, uh, and that's the thing. I, I checked out your pricing online, and my first reaction was, "Is this guy crazy?" Or <laughs> like, what? Because because the product looks so good. Like the nylon braiding on there is is beautiful, you know. And, and, I, and I've seen the different options you have. Like, mm-hmm. it's just gorgeous stuff, man. I, I saw there was one in particular I really liked the the black and gold looking one. You know, the yeah. black and yellow. I don't know. I'm not weird like that, but I think I've got something like that on it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And it, it's 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 just cool, you know. It, it it's cool looking um, sleeving that you put on on obviously on the cables, right. and the terminations look really quality. So I was like, what's the catch? You know, because I'm so used to. Well, I'm so used to l- looking at cable companies and having to pay thousands of dollars. You know. Yeah, I think that's always been a conscious effort to be 
price conscious and presentation conscious. So <clears throat> when I started it, you know, there were things that frustrated me when I was shopping myself as a customer. So I wanted to try to address those things. And that sort of became my, you know, these pillars that we're trying to always uphold <laughs> or whatever. It's right. I don't want to sound too, too uh, lame or whatever, but it's, I guess it's true. Um, and, and that is, you know, we want it to be affordable. So I, I would hate for somebody to go buy a pair of ship 9,500s, right? And then they go on Reddit and they see somebody with these cool custom headphone cables. They want to go get them for themselves. And mm -hmm. they go to like some site, I, I'll refrain from naming them or whatever, but they're going to go to a site and they're going to say that you should buy a cable that costs more than your headphones did. That's, right. a, that's a tough proposition to make to like yeah. a, uh, someone who's just kind of getting into the hobby. And so to me, I want those people to feel like <laughs> there's an option that is uh, affordable and, and looks nice. So an, another thing I guess is, one of my frustrations with the audio file stuff is a lot of the products just look really tacky and mm -hmm. ugly. And uh, there's like headphones that I just, I'm not, I like them. I'm sure they sound great. I'm sure they sound like uh, heaven on your ears, but I'm not going to wear that. I'm not going to put that on my head. It's just, it's ugly. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, when I went to, cause I'm in Denver. So when I went to um, Rocky mountain audio fest uh, two years ago now in 2018 right. before, before the plague um <coughs> how's that cough so uh, <laughs> uh when i went to recommend audio fest they had a whole like convention room just for head fi and stuff like that yeah so i i sat down I, I saw this one area that they, they were selling cables right um mm -hmm. uh, and they but they had these focal headphones that i'm like oh you know focal headphones that i'd like to like just listen to it right. but the whole point of their their table was to sell these, these, uh, the, I don't know, these connector, these cables that were supposed to create this huge difference, right? right. Huge audible difference. So I sat down, the guy's like, okay, try it on. We're going to A, B it. <laughs> I heard no difference. Either, yeah. either, either yeah. my ears don't work the way he wanted them to, right. Or my mind wasn't programmed to be, to want to hear a difference. Yeah. You feel me? yeah. So I think people who claim those things, like I'm not trying to say they're wrong or anything. Like personally, I don't hear that difference when I try like a, a $500 cable versus our cable or something. Personally, I don't. Fortunately with us, like any feedback we've gotten about Sonics regarding our cable has been positive. People say it sounds great, et cetera. But like, it's not ever going to be something we brag about on our website or try to like tell people is going to, is something that's definitely going to happen when they try our cable. Cause it's like, there's a million different possible combinations of equipment you pair our cable with. And mm -hmm. to say that our cable is like, you know, <laughs> there was, there was like some sweeping generalities that are like, don't make any sense. Like, Oh man, it's got sweeping lush lows and then, uh, you know, super technical detailed highs, but it's not going to hurt your ears. It's like, it doesn't oh, it's not like saying the, anything about anything, you know. It's like they're describing wine, you know. You know how people <laughs> yeah. they they use all those like strange, right. uh, you know, characteristics for wine. I feel like in audio, those people, those fanatics, um, will will treat it the same way, you know. Oh, the the sound is so color, and I'm going to get lambasted for this for this interview for I mean, sure. I mean, probably, I'm, and it's, I'm not saying like those people are wrong, or I'm just saying. They're not. Uh, They're just. Different not, I mean, it's just a different experience, and I wish I had an ear that could could hear that, but I, I don't. You know, I I listen to all the MP3 files. I listen to MP3 files first of all, and all of my files on my computer are like MP3 320 mm -hmm. or like Which stereo fine. bit rate. Which is not, and fine. I cannot hear the difference between that and FLAC, and I'm just right. I'm okay with that, I guess. But uh, to I try to answer your question, just the low price thing has always been a focus, and it's it's always been something where i think there we we could charge more i guess there's companies who they use the same parts we do they it's like, like pretty much the same stuff and they're charging like 50 bucks more than we are and i think in the in the audiophile world you can kind of get into this mode where you, you know if something's less in ex, less expensive it's assumed to be less quality or less good it's not as good right and i, I don't think to be the misconception yes that, I don't think that's necessarily true all the time. 
those ship 9500s you have are like case in point it's like a great pair of headphones it's super affordable 72 bucks and yeah. i they sounded better than those focals I'll tell you that yeah <laughs> um having said I, the the focal elix man it's on my list of, of headphones to get you know just gotta sell it for me a few more cables but see i uh, mean you're you, you might you might make fun of me for this but i like bassier headphones I don't okay. know. I, I grew up with the, when I was a kid, I grew up with the Sony mega bass, he, like headphones, you know, over mm-hmm. ears. And that to me is one of the most perfect headphones f- for that time. You know, I have, obviously I haven't put them on in, in many, many, many moons, but ah, man, I like bass ear head, but I don't like too much bass. Like skull candy has these yeah. it's almost like subwoofers on your ears. And, oh, and that, <laughs> dude, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, but I do like a more balanced sound. I think the Ship 9500s are going to be my go-tos for the quite some time because I think they have just enough bass to 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 make it a nice, well-rounded sound. You know, right? But um, but yeah, anybody that gets in the in the head fight game and, and and wants to get new headphones, you, you know, eventually cables become essential. You know, it, it's like a necessity to to. Yeah. Because, like you said, they're going to be switching out to different sources, switching out to different things, and you've now created this this one stop shop type of deal. Yeah, uh, you know, you said you could charge quadruple, quintuple, ten times what you're charging now, and people would probably still buy it and not even bat an eye. And I respect the hell out of you for not doing that and not taking advantage of your customers, dude. So, so that's the thing. I, I, I think I've always had this idea in mind of somebody's going to go and shop for this. They just got like their their headphone for Christmas off a of drop, right? Maybe it's a $100 headphone off a of drop or the ship 9500s off of Amazon where they got it for, as a gift from somebody else and they want to go look for a cable and they're going to see this stuff that's just crazily priced. And, and not that that stuff isn't good, but for people getting into it that's a tough choice to make and so i i think there's this price point where you know it's inexpensive enough it's it's inexpensive enough to warrant giving a shot and it's also um you know it, you, you you might come to this decision i had where it's like i'm just going to go make them myself you know and this is sort of inexpensive enough that like it doesn't warrant you going and taking that time to go fiddle mm-hmm. with the soldering iron and, and and bang your head against the wall like here's something that's inexpensive I'm sorry if you don't like red or touch of gray, the, the gray colors we have or whatever, but, uh, you know, and it'll get to you quick. You know, we, we try to ship within five days right now, which. Well, you do have fun. custom, yeah. well, you, have, you have boutique and you have custom offerings. So if I wanted like a custom color, you could do it. It might take a couple of weeks, you know, three, right. it's like a standard lead time. Yeah. Um, but, but it is possible to get a custom color if I'm trying to match it with a certain aesthetic that, mm-hmm that I'm curious about, but your basic colors are red and touch of gray, which I think touch of gray looks really, really good. Red, yeah. red is really cool too. It's just, uh, that used I, to be all it was, was just red when we first launched. And okay. I knew it was going to be polarizing, but I kind of just thought, uh, I couldn't decide on a standard color. I knew I didn't want to do black and red's my favorite color. So it's like, let's just go with it. Not think too hard about it and just try to put a good product out there. You know, Dude, I, might, I might, I might have to order a pair of red then just to, just to keep it, to keep it OG at this point, you know, I want to keep it OG. Um, so tell me a little bit about club club. Well, you, you mentioned the, the podcast, mm-hmm. what is club club all about? Oh, so, okay. Basically I launched it in September, 2019. So probably the five months leading up to that, it's been kind of like a two job life for me. I get mm-hmm. home from five and then go work my second job. And for a while there, it was like, I, I mean, I didn't go to sleep before midnight, probably any stretch of nights <laughs> mm-hmm. until maybe recently. And um, I basically have been MIA from my friends and uh, my, my uh, some of my family too and all that stuff. So it's just a way for me to have a scheduled time to talk to my friends. And, you know, we base it, it, it's all the people on that podcast. There, there's Hannah who who works with me here at hard audio cables. Um, like I said, most of the customers interact with her f- through emails. I like to say that I do like 5% of the emails, maybe still like, I still try to like participate and talk to people on emails, but that'd be a lie. Like she really has kind of taken all that and I appreciate her for it. It's like my number one source of anxiety. Um, and then there's a, 
my best friend Patrick, who's in they, Hannah and Patrick are located in Boston. And mm. uh, Patrick is an acoustics engineer. It's his background. He works in sort of a. He, he's gonna if I if I said what it was, he'd correct me. If I tried to say what it was, it's it's. He's like a. He does programming and test programming for like some nice audio systems for a company you've also heard of. <laughs> gotcha. Um, like you go to Best Buy and buy the stuff he's been working on. And uh, oh wow. And then we have our friend Zach who who. Uh, lives here in Tyler with me and uh, he, he's, he's like, a, his background is like IT and he's worked in like TV stations and, and uh, broadcast audio type stuff. So that's his background. He's like a tech guy too. And um, we all, so me, myself, Patrick and Hannah have a band together. We used to be a lot more active than we were. Or I used to be a lot more active in it <laughs> before the business. And um, that's what right. this stuff's back. It's like, I'm trying to get my setup here going so I can start doing music again. Uh, and I saw that you have like a tube amp back there, right? Yeah, it's a couple uh, carbon amplifiers and then a nice. little speaker cabinet. Just I wanted to try to get some guitars in here and too, like make it look like I decorated my office, but not enough time before this. Sorry, ran out of time. But uh, so you, guys, you guys want to jam out? It's just you're too busy. Yeah, so we do the podcast. It's just a way for us to get together and talk on a regular basis and. The, the concept of it is just we take turns picking an album we think is interesting and uh, we don't, I guess, in, in the indie world, there's a lot of buzz bands and buzz albums that come out. They make a big splash. We listen to them for like five months and then it's forgotten about, you know. So our whole concept is like maybe let's go back and like re-listen to this stuff and take it in and, and, and consider it more, consider it further than just like a uh, like a throwaway consumable type of media, you know, like. What, what, what type um, of genre do you, do you guys like? Oh, it's all over the place. I think um, for me, I think my stuff so far has been like in the sludge and, and doom and uh, a shoegazy realm of music. I, I guess my favorite music genres are like post hardcore and sludge and heavier stuff, honestly. Yeah. And, um, for like the band we're in is an emo band, Midwest emo. Like, so if you know who American football is and stuff like that, I mean, it's, it's like that, that, uh, type of music. And, um, so we've done that some emo, we've done hip hop records. Uh, so there's a band we covered on there. Uh, Thou, we ended up talking to those guys after doing an episode and they, and, and they came on and actually did an episode with us. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we did like a most deaf album, which is, funny because it's like this one of the heaviest bands on the planet that you, you assume they're going to pick like some black metal album or some super heavy album and they they went with most deaf which was cool it was a good episode and um we hope to do more stuff like that get some of these bands on there well like I, I think people that appreciate music can appreciate most most genres yeah. you know they can find okay. something they like in every genre that's and that's how i am i i, I love uh different types of music and, and different genres. I'm, I'm not, I'm not very uh, picky. That's why when it, someone asks me, what's your favorite band or what's your favorite kind of music? I'm like everything, everyone, you know, like everyone has got to have at least one good song. I mean, you know? <laughs> yeah. We definitely don't have uh, like, uh, like this last week we did a post hardcore band called the, the blood brothers. This band mm -hmm. called burn piano island burn. It's like screamo, scene kid stuff from the mid 2000s mm -hmm. not my favorite stuff but we did talk about it and then next week we're going to do this band from the 90s uh called king's x they released this album in the 90s called dog man that's our next one and then we did like circle takes a square a couple weeks ago we did goody mob from atlanta it's like a hip-hop group and stuff so we, we it varies sometimes i wonder like our cuts too deep like these are some albums that no one's really mm -hmm. heard of but i mean we're just gonna do it. we know that there's not many people <laughs> listening anyway we're, we're just going to enjoy ourselves and whatever happens happens and it is music centric like i don't think hard audio cables comes up because we say like email us at club club at hard audio cables.com and that's about the only mention of the business that there is on the podcast it's not really it, it is pretty much just about music yeah. so it's a cool way for your customers who are obviously into music to consume other types of content which is cool i think that's cool i think that's cool that you you've included that in there we, we want it to be sort of more community oriented and we are doing things coming up to hopefully, you know, uh, 
you know, make that happen faster or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, like the main point of all this is to enjoy the music you listen to. So I kind of want to keep that at the forefront if we can, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, the podcast sort of helps with that. It's just another thing to consume. I'd like to think that we don't exist solely to just take people's money, you know, like I would like to, you know, provide some source of entertainment or, uh, you know, community or whatever. That's people. refreshing. That's refreshing to hear from a, especially from a, from, from a, a cable company. But uh, cause I tell you what, man, you're, you're coming in the game at, at a right time, I think, because right now during these times that we're living in is a lot of people's pause that they needed to, to, to really find what the, what they're, what they want to do, what they, what they're doing. So Odd, the audio industry has had a huge, huge push during these these times uh, because a lot of people, you know, are, are stuck at home. You know, they, they mm-hmm. need to do something. Listening to music is is just, you know, what they're doing. So I'm sure you probably have had a interesting last few months just in production, I'm sure, and, and, and orders yeah. and stuff like that. We just had to, had to – we had to change the way we do our custom shop. Um in the past, you could just email us what you wanted to get for the custom shop, and Hannah would have like a backlog of 200 emails to get through. And it's just, we're basically getting more orders than we have the capacity for at the moment. And we just have to sort of slow down just a little bit to try to manage everything while we continue to grow. It's like, unfortunately, I can't just hire somebody off the street and have them be productive and making an impact that same day. You know, it takes some training. Yeah. And uh, it's probably on my end too. Like, I'm very picky about how everything comes out. and. Well, you want it to be perfect. You know, you I mentioned want- the looks and everything, and, and it's like the presentation is big on my side. Like, I want to make sure, like, the cable looks and feels nice and mm-hmm. sound, sounds right, of course, right? And, and there's no failures and stuff. So that means there's a lot of stuff that gets – that doesn't make it out the door. And um, when you get new people, you want to make sure that they're they're helping the cause and not hurting it. And Right. We, want, we have a good crew here. I, it's a – everybody seems to work pretty well with each other, and we try to, like – whenever we add somebody, it's a, it's not a simple thing. You know, we want to make sure that they fit in and that they're going to gel with a group. And well, it sounds like you guys are more like a family. So if someone's not <laughs> vibing, you know, it, it's not going to work, you know, it, it, it's gotta be a, a cool machine that, that works well with one another. So, but I, I understand that. I, it's just, it's just part of the learning process, I guess, you know, I mean, I mean, you've oh, yeah. had experience and like you said, you've had experience in, um, production and and design yeah. and engineering and <clears throat> i bet it feels good working for yourself now though yeah that was a i mean yeah it's always something you kind of or i kind of aspired to like just have some freedom you know mm-hmm. and uh i'm working for a big faceless corporation you kind of see like how you see you see how things are run and you feel like man that's there's like the human side of things kind of gets lost in the mix and and so when you start when I started having to be the boss of somebody or whatever, it's like, I try to keep those things in mind. And, you know, I, I would like to say like our company is like humanity first type deal. Like we want, it's, it's humans on this side. We understand you're a human on that side. We're doing our best and just want to try to keep that in mind or like try to make sure that that comes across, you know, <laughs> it's not just like, give me your money and we'll see you later, you know? Um, right. Right. That being said, you know, after running a business, you can see how things end up the way they do in a corporate environment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you see why stuff ends up that way because you just, you know, it's like you have to create systems and rules for everybody. And it ends up the way it does a lot of times out of necessity more so than a choice for people, you know? Right. And I think that once people, once corporations get a little too big, they start forgetting about the people that, put them got them there you know um and and i'm not saying every company any every big corporations like that i'm just saying there there are some corporations out there that you know they they just care about the how much money is being made and how much what's the you know what's that what's that Mm -hmm. the bottom line you know bottom line yeah like and that sucks you know that's but i could i could see that you're not that, that you're not that type of person so I hope not, man. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you could be. I don't know. I could be completely wrong about you. Oh, you could be a, yeah. 
complete dick, but yeah, I'll go in the dungeon in there after this and crack the whip. <laughs> Make sure the lights aren't staying on longer than five minutes. We got an electric bill to take care of here. Faster, more, more cables, more cables. <laughs> yeah. Solder by candlelight. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, that's horrible, dude. That's horrible. <laughs> so what's what's next, man? What 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 new products can we expect from Heart? Uh, it's hard now. How did you come up as Heart? Actually, I was I was going to ask you oh, that. Is that, your, um, is that so last I, my last name is Alvarado, which oh. is not. So that's not hard. Or like Alvarado, if I want to be like really. So you're Hispanic, like me. Yeah. A couple of Hispanics. That's right. <laughs> it's I, actually, I just, man, it's full of us. I, I just don't look it, man. I'm I'm like a, a, a like, like a camouflage Hispanic. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm, wa- I'm washing my my color out right now. Maybe I might get away with it. But, there you go. Um, so. I mentioned we have two kids and my wife has her own business as well. She named it after her youngest kid. And then I started this one and I was like, I'll just name it after the other one. So my, my, my oldest boy is named heart and oh, cool! how the, the name came about. And then I have a, a cousin who is, uh, of course, talk about being Hispanic. Of course we have a cousin who can do stuff, right? I have a we cousin. We all have cousins that can do stuff. Does graphic design work. And I was like, Hey man, I'm thinking about calling this business. This can you, you want to try it, try it a logo and poof, he knocks it out of the park with this thing. And I guess it's it up it. for you. Yeah. yeah that, that logo is legit. So I was just like, man, that we had that maybe half three months before launching. I was just, it's just like inspiring or whatever and ran with it. And so, yeah, hard audio. I felt like it came out. I, dude, I love, I, okay. <laughs> I love the website. The website's super cool. And yeah. um, trying to make it. So it's like, if again, like having somebody who's not familiar with it in mind, trying to keep it somewhat uh, sensible to them or like not too technical, but it's hard. It's hard not to um, get technical with these. Oh, you're cables. starting to do patch cables. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. And this, for the people that are just now tuning in or haven't, weren't listening earlier or deaf, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, kits that we were talking about. So you buy one cable and the kit will come. Okay. And this is the gray and this is the red. I actually really like the gray dude. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice neutral color. So, you know, that multi kit one is sort of like the end all be all does whatever you want it to, but we realize that that's still kind of expensive. So I'm really trying to keep price from being a, a barrier to entry for people. So we came up with that budget friendly kit, which is like the greenish one on that page. Uh, I'll pull it back up. Wait, I lost it. And so doing some clever stuff with like a an adapter on a on a three and a half inch and um, l- limiting changing the mix of what's comes with it. It kind of gets it in a price range that makes it half the price of the multi kit one. So that's probably like if you're on a budget and you just want to give it a shot, you know, maybe get that budget multi kit and and forego the case. The case is really cool. I wish like you talked about that. Uh, unboxing video from zeos he had like our first case which i i hated that thing i'm so glad mm-hmm. we don't do it anymore but we have these nicer cases now and uh but if you want if you're budget conscious forgo the case just get it get the kit by itself and then a one headphone cable and see if you like it and if you're like me like i get a pair of headphones and i don't even i don't even put them on until i have made a cable for them that fits into our system because it's just like what i like now you know i'm, I'm using it right here <laughs> dude it looks quality bro you know, that's what um, <clears throat> that's what totally blows me away. It looks like quality. Uh, obviously, it passed the, the Zio's test, you know. At the uh, end of the day, you know, it, it is lower in price. And, and, like, there is no magic to it. Like, at the end of the day, we accept lower margins than other companies are accepting. So, whereas a company might make 150% profit on something, we're, we're taking, like, 70% or something like that. And that's just the reality of it. And I guess my thought process there is, like, I just really want it to be to fit this price range for people and we can still make money. I can still live. I can still afford to feed my family and, and pay my mortgage and stuff. Like I don't need to be a millionaire or whatever. Like we just need to, I'm, I just trying to like just, just put out a product that works and then the, the money thing can hopefully take care of itself as long as we keep things right on our end. Mm-hmm. So fortunately, you know, fingers crossed it's, it continues this way that it's just, it's working out so far. I think you're on the right track. And I think, uh, you know, um, the fact that 
you're 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 a good guy. You seem like a good guy. You know, I, I don't know you personally, but <laughs> you seem like a like a really good guy. And disappointment at every turn, guys. Don't don't let him uh, telling you. Uh, <laughs> um, any any new products coming out soon? So what are you working on? We have more multi kits coming out. Um, I want to do like a whole new line of products too, which I shouldn't talk about much probably. We have uh, probably a new box coming out. So right on, man. Well, thank you so much, dude, for coming on. I, I really appreciate the time you took. I know uh, I know when you're when you're hustling and you're grinding and you're working, time is of the essence. So I appreciate I do appreciate the time you took to talk to me today. Uh, no problem. We had, um, we had a game plan meeting before this. So like, okay, I'm going to be gone for about three hours today. I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this. Let's just here's what we're going to do without me being uh, incapacitated over here. And and that's crazy how you, like you were very, you seem like you're very hands-on. So uh, I, think that's, I that's, wish I could be more hands-on. Like I miss being able to solder cables like as much as I used to, but yeah, try to be yeah. around. I'm here. I'll tell you what, I tried making my own cables, uh, my own speaker cables, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's arthritis or my old age now, but dude, after like, it's the tough. second or third one, my my hands were just like, oh, God, like, I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. I, I'm starting to get the same thing, man. I uh, hadn't picked up my guitar in months, you know, with this. And I picked it up a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, man, my hands hurt. I, I have arthritis now. Like between the time I I had, hadn't stopped, I stopped playing and picked it up. Like I developed arthritis in my hands. It's, it's sad. I'm getting old. Dude, you're not old, man. You're you're you're. <laughs> you're at the perfect, you're exactly where you need to be. You know, you, you got your own business, you're young, uh, and, and things are exploding for you, bro. I, I mean, and like we talked about that Zeos uh, review, uh, you know, with him, it's like, if he likes something, a lot of people are going to like that thing. Right. We've been very fortunate that, you know, he ended up liking our product and it's in his videos regularly a lot of times. And that's been, it's helped a lot. The Zeos effect is, is a real thing. It really is. It really is. Um, you know, I mean, I, there's some really other. There's some great other YouTube we, uh, YouTubers we've interacted with uh, that we, I've done interviews for before. A lot of people probably heard this stuff before if they saw, heard any of that those interviews. But uh, there's some good ones out there, man. And and you're one of them too. Now look at you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I, yeah, I think, I, yeah. Just keep it up, man. It's like it looks like you've got the right idea. Just consistently putting quality content out, and then letting the letting the chips fall where they may i think like that's the best you can do well when i when i first started this project i <clears throat> i didn't really know my place in 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 the audio industry i didn't know what i wanted to do and now i'm figuring out my strengths my weaknesses what i'm good at what i'm not good at and i i just try to put out digestible content for mm -hmm. and, and and an honest review you know like for example my latest review i did uh, I, I got a, I got some shit for it because it was the Kef LS, the LS50 Meta, the brand new Kef speakers that just came out, and I wasn't gushing over them. You know, and I think everybody expected me to be just completely kissing Kef's ass, and that's not. I mean, I, I have a great relationship with them. Uh, they they've been on the one of their representatives and has been on um, this uh, this mutual show I do with with a, a friend of mine. <clears throat> no problems there. It's just wasn't a huge fan of the speaker, you know, and I, and I was honest about it. I was honest about what I didn't like about it. And that was maybe something I was more afraid to do early on. Cause I didn't want to piss anybody off, you know, <clears throat> but now I kind of see how, why Zeos has such a good following is because he is a hundred percent transparent. He's sincere. He's sincere. If he doesn't like a certain aesthetic or something, he'll tell you, he'll be like, mm -hmm. this, this feels like, you know, cheap plastic crap, or this feels good and this sounds good or this sounds bad. Right. And I feel like you can actually trust what he's saying, you know? And that's why I actually, when I was making my purchase, cause I, I, I bought the ship 9,500s to review and to use. Um, so if I'm not, I don't have a deal with Phillips or anything. I just, I right. bought them <clears throat> and they were only you know, at 70, 72, 73 bucks on Amazon. So I was like the hell with it. I want to, I want to get into the headphone game. I want to, I'm tired of just doing speaker reviews and amplifier reviews. All right. I want to change it up. So that's what, that's what kind of got the ball rolling there. But you know, I, I couldn't, I didn't have anything bad to say about the ship 9500s. 
You know, they mm-hmm. the cord is too long. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Otherwise, they're comfortable. They do get a little hot, but they're for the most part they're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, they sound great. You know, so um, I'm and, actually and bonus points because they they don't look ridiculous on somebody's head. They're like they are a nice looking headphone. You know, yeah. So I actually have a deal now with um, an agent for Hi-Fi Man. So I'm going to be doing some Hi-Fi Man reviews. Sick. Um, I like their stuff. I mean, I'm a little bit – I may be a soured a little bit on some of their newer stuff, but mm-hmm. I mean I, I like Hi-Fi Man stuff. I mean it's good. It's quality stuff to me. Yeah, they have a huge spectrum too. They have mm-hmm. very affordable options for people that are just trying to get into the game, and then they have – that five thousand dollar, you know, <laughs> yeah. headphone that uh, right. like I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> the, that's what kills me too. Is like the five thousand dollar flagship stuff is always like the stuff that looks the worst. It's like it doesn't have to have spinning wheels and lights on it. Just like give me a nice, nice looking headphone or something. Yeah, or something clean, that luxurious clean, look. Clean, you know. Yeah. Just, just you know that sounds really good, but it's like those uh those B N O H sixes. I don't know if you're familiar with those headphones, but it's like those are tough to beat in the looks department. You know, really? Okay, uh, so let me ask you this: what, if if you could answer this, what is okay? Do you prefer in ear monitor or over over ear? Over over. Uh, oh, I think uh, uh, some nice open back headphones are like always the number one choice for me. Um, I don't have a nice speaker setup, so like I need to watch your YouTube videos and figure out like what should I get myself. Like I have a cheap a cheap amp and s- some Micah MB forty twos here. That's and, not bad, dude. I, I like the Micahs. That was that was actually my first review was Micah. Right. Dude, I, I, I bought it and I'm like, that's a great that's great for fun. the great for the price, I think. Oh yeah. But Super. I don't know a lot about that type of thing. But for headphones, so I mean we, if we make a cable for it, we try to buy it and get it in house and make sure we're testing on it frequently and make sure our stuff fits, looks right with it, whatever. So I have some some Odyssey headphones and things like that here and uh, some of the expensive Fostex stuff. I've gotten the expensive Dan Clark audio things. Um, oh, wow. It's painful. It's much much less painful to buy the Ship 9500s to test on than it is those. But uh, I, I would say like the headphones I keep using the most, my my HE, uh, is it 135X that came out on drop? It was like the drop version of a Hi-Fi Man headphone. Um I've got my Cindy Ivas up there, which I, I like a lot. They sound great. But my, my favorite headphone probably out of the whole bunch is the T60 RPs, the T60s from Fostex. Okay. It's like a semi-open. It looks like the T50s that are super popular and everybody that does the, the Argon mod on. I mean, out of all the headphones I have here, like price to performance, like that's my favorite probably. And then the IEM thing is just it's so convenient. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm using right now. I'm using, uh, uh, IEMs by periodic audio. Uh, I'm actually good friends with the, with the owner and the d- designer, Dan Wiggins. Um, I think, did you have him on, on yeah. an interview? I think I, I might've watched that and I was like, Oh man, you're going to be so disappointed by me. Uh, how can I follow up a guy like that? You have some uh, geniuses he, coming he, on here, man. He's great, man. He's, he's super <laughs> cool. Um, he, he, uh, he, he has created a, a really, cool in-ear monitor i mean it sounds i use it now i I have two pairs i have a i have his entry level pair i use for uh for this stuff you know because i got Mm -hmm. tired i have a pair of audio technicas i i was using for for this for for Mm -hmm. my podcasting but after an hour of podcasting like my ears are just like throbbing right yeah i'm I'm a big fan of grados and that's like the worst problem with grados it's like i still have i still have them right here like that they're still in the mix but um, I prefer this man, you know, and I have another pair I use for other stuff, but now that I have the ships, I'm only going to be using those for, for my, for my leisure listening, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the open back headphone experience, like once you start getting, once you get a good pair of open backs, mm-hmm. like the ships you got and like I, I got into Grados and you talked about wanting bassy headphones. Grados are not bassy at all. It's like, what would you recommend for a nice headphone with some full bass the meze 99s i think the meze yeah, 99 99. they have like a nice pleasant sounding bass to them I'm write that down there's like the fostex t20s which are supposed to be bass oriented and then beyond that I, it's hard for me to say because i generally just i'm kind of deaf in the high range from that stuff back there to yeah. practices and shows with no earplugs and um, ouch like 
So when I listen to a pair of Kratos, it sounds perfect to me, but somebody else may say it's like ear piercingly, ear piercing in the highs, you know? So I don't mind a nice natural sounding, you know, mid range kind of illuminated headphones. So I like that. Nice. I like that stuff. The Kratos are, are cool to me. Well, I'm gonna have to check those out, man. Um, well, thanks so much, dude, for being on my show. Uh, I appreciate it. I plan Thank on you. definitely interacting with you in the future, having you back on. Maybe you should do a uh, you should do a live stream. We do live streams every Tuesday. Uh, you should hop on one of them and just kind of shoot shoot the breeze with us and, and talk shop and and hang out. We can do that. Uh, right? and you, yeah, it's at eight o'clock Mountain, so it'd be nine o'clock your time. So. Right around the time. We want, to do, we want to do some more stuff podcast wise and things like that. So maybe hopefully I can find an excuse to get you on there or something. That'd be great. That'd be fun, man. Yeah. I, fun. I, I'm usually the one asking the questions, but sometimes it's fun to actually, I, I, I really wanted to grill you, but you're like, I want to try to keep it to 30 minutes. I was like, Oh, there's no chance. Yeah, you can grill me. Dude. We're already at an hour. So <laughs> at this point, who cares, dude? Um, if you have three hours, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to say like we get in the hobby so you love it and so like the proposition of spending 300 bucks on a headphone is reasonable because you're like mm -hmm. it's going to sound awesome it's fun it's going to be cool <clears throat> but like we kind of forget that like there's people who are like they think a $20 purchase of a headphone is they buy that $20 skull candy headphone from Best Buy or whatever and that's like a good headphone to them they spent money on a headphone yeah. so like we think uh, like those people are they deserve uh products too or like they deserve like some sort of entry point into like really getting to enjoy the music they listen to but <laughs> it's like every time i see that we got a visitor from uh, an audio science review uh i think that's what it all or, or yeah super audio friends or audio science review whatever i'm always like oh crap we're about to get canceled man somebody hates our stuff we're gonna dude okay here's a question <laughs> has anybody cut up your stuff and, and looked inside and and and, and giving you yeah, i'm sure they have but any mess about it? You haven't heard anything? Nothing that I've, uh, fortunately, I mean, it's, I mean, I say this and then things are going to like combust tomorrow, but <laughs> fortunately the feedback we've gotten has all been like overwhelmingly positive. And, um, I don't, I mean, we use high quality cable. Like when people ask what cable we use, I mean, it's, we use Mogami cable, which is like when you start talking about, the Mugami cable. is super expensive, dude. Like, it's, like not, it's, cheap. Yeah. it's not cheap. Like, I, trust me, when I was messing around with my cable stuff, I looked at Megami. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how much per foot? Right, Did right. So, I mean, I think people assume at our price point we're using something that's like off brand and not good. But we we try to keep all the all the uh, all of the uh, components. <laughs> we try to make sure they're good components. You know, sure. it's just we just don't charge as much for it and um so i think if someone does cut it open and see it's like you know they'll be like okay pleasantly right surprised or, or just like okay they're doing the right thing here you know hopefully that's the case hopefully no one's doing that though please don't cut open your cables if you have an issue just send it to us we will repair it or or replace it <laughs> you know look what i just started <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you're all worried now people are just cutting cables you know, after email you know just no, cut it okay. cables. Hannah's going to be, uh, that's her name, right? Your, yep, your, yep. Hannah's going to be uh, forwarding all the emails to me. She's like, oh, look what you did. Now you answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might do that. Oh, man. No, I, I had a blast with you, dude. You're you're a good guy. Um, I, I, like I, I want to have, have you back on the live stream and everything. And, sure. Um, and I definitely, I'm definitely going to be purchasing, uh, at, at, at the very least, my touch of gray uh, six foot, you know, cable for, for my ships because yeah, that nine and a half foot thing ain't going to work, dude. That's, right. that's, not, <laughs> that's not, that's not ideal. And I heard that too, the 10 foot cable thing. It's like, man, it's a very specific use case. Like Sennheiser. I was going to ask you about that. Do you like, do you like the Sennheisers? Uh, actually like objectively they're great. Like their products are all uh -huh. that I come into contact with. Like I have the 58 X's here just like the uh, budget 580 or 6, 600 series headphone that they put on drop. And those are great. I'd recommend them to anybody. Mm -hmm. I think the things that I get frustrated with Sennheiser is like they use proprietary connectors on all their stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. if you want to make your own cable for it, you have to get the exact connector to use with their headphone or else it's not going to work. And to me, it's like I see why they do that. 
they make more money if a customer has to come back to them to buy a, a replacement cable or something like that. But in terms of providing value for your customer, I feel like you're removing value from your product because mm-hmm. you're, you're taking co- options away from your customer. And I know that it, like, it's capitalism. It's like if you're not doing it right unless you're trying to get every last buck out of it. That's just the nature of the beast. Well, so. it's, it's like Apple with their lightning connector, you know? Right, like, right. And so I tend, to, I tend to really like just I, I admire like Apple. I, I pick up their products. I'm like, man, this is like really well built. It's sturdy. Everything feels great. But I just like I can't get behind the ethos of those companies like in the mm-hmm. way they're running it or whatever or no i agree because then you can't make for the customers that do have sennheisers it makes it harder for you to give them a solution because if yeah. you start making you know plugs for their proprietary stuff you that can you, it's not like you can license that you know it's just right you're, you get in trouble so that sucks because that's a huge that's a, I, I that's a huge yeah, brand. Big. <laughs> you know that's a huge brand that that could you know, a lot of your, a lot of their customers could be benefiting from your product. Right. You know? Right. So I think a, like they are, they do make great products though. Like, I mean, I've never heard anything of theirs that isn't, isn't good. doesn't sound good and isn't comfortable, but mm-hmm. I'm also relatively uh, easy to please when it comes to headphones. Like I try not to get too, too far into the comparisons between my headphones. Cause I feel like it takes the fun out of it. Like I want to just grab one, put it on and enjoy listening to music and, and it sounds great. And, uh, I, I think, um, listening to their stuff. I mean, it all sounds good to me, but like I said, I'm, I'm easy to please. Like it's mm-hmm. very hard for me to say like, man, that headphone sucks. Don't use it. Like some people right. would say like, they'll pick out like an $800 headphone and be like, that's a, that's a crap pair of headphone. Nobody should be listening to music on that. And I just like, I don't really agree with that. It's like, it's, it's really good. It's just has a, you have a gripe with it, which is fine. But you know, I mean, dude, uh, I've had some headphones that are, you know, you know, you remember, you remember back in the day with, with the, I don't know. I, I, I want to ask you how old you are, but I don't want to do it on, in public. I think I'm 32. I okay. Think. You're 32. Really so you, you, so you, you'll remember the, the, the disc man days, Sony disc man. Mm-hmm. And they used to come with these these small like mm-hmm. mega bass over ear headphones, not the big ones, but the. Right. I thought those were great. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a pair of Cos head headphones for those. I, I can't remember that. It's always like KPH thirty i or something, thirty five i or something. Mm-hmm. And those are supposed to be fantastic for the price, and they're like nice and light and usable, which is nice. That's what you're looking for, right? So yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, back once in- you try something great, it's like it's hard to go back to. Like right. I remember when I got my first pair of like audiophile headphones and i was like went back to my crappy earbuds to go on a jog or something i was like oh how did i deal with this for so long you know it can become a problem because then you're like well gotta buy new earbuds <laughs> you know oh, man I'm telling you it's a it's a never-ending never-ending journey all right man thanks so much for joining me james it was a pleasure talking to you uh we'll we'll put all your information in the description below so that way people know exactly where to go buy their first cable from heart and hopefully we'll get you some uh some people uh interested in in buying some stuff thank you man i I enjoyed it a lot it was fun yeah man uh so we'll see you soon and guys tune in next week for another episode of hi-fi hour